Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about the user plane evolution, uh, focusing on distributed uh, light or the integrated UPF. As we go along with the presentation, it will become clear on what those terms, terms mean. So um, I will first give a quick background, very high level on mobile user plane. I'll talk about the trend of RAN centralization and the core network distribution. I talk about alternative user plane implementation and deployment that some vendors and um, operators are promoting. And then uh, going one step further, uh, at some thoughts in 6G on how to evolve the uh, mobile user plane. And of course, at the, at the end, we have to have a summary. So um, a mobile communication network, MCN, includes two parts, RAN and core network. The RAN is basically radio access network, and the core network, CN, is um, the brain of this entire mobile communication network. We'll talk about those uh, uh, further. They are connected over a transport network. And there are many planes in this uh, uh, MCN. The first one, user plane, which is the focus of t this uh, presentation, it is basically a data plane that carries mobile user traffic. It spans from the user equipment, so UE is a 5G term, Another word for it is basically the mobile device. So it spans from the UE, uh, UE to a user plane function. Again, another 5G uh, term. Um, that UPF function in the core network. And then there is a control plane that is, that is used to set up the resources needed for the mobile communication. And then there are management planes and synchronization planes which we are going to skip. We'll have a picture later on this, all these things together. So RAN, Radio Access Network, is basically a network of radio access components that terminate the air interface from the UEs. Um, over the generations, they have evolved from the original node B to E node B in, in 4G, and then finally to G node B in 5G. In the early days, the RAN is dis distributed, meaning that uh, those components, node B or E node B, they are distributed and self-sufficient standalone units. Now, the CRAM, meaning centralized RAM, with CRAM, we have those G node Bs separated into distributed units and centralized units. So for distributed units, we have GNOB DU, and for centralized uh, units, we have GNOB CU. The trend is from the DRAN to CRAN transition. Core network, uh, or CN, is the brain of uh, MCN. Its purpose is to enable and implement mobile services. Um, it has control planes and user plane uh, components. Um, I want to point out that um, RAN concept, RAN and core network concept, they are actually no longer a topology, topological concept. It's really focusing on, on the, the functionalities of those components. It's, it does not mean that top, top, uh, the core network is in the core of the, or your transport network and the radio. Uh, uh, RAN is the, on the access part of your transport network. Um, another important concept is CUPS, or control plane user plane separation, which allows the control plane and user plane components to scale and to deploy independently. Uh, for example, in 5G, uh, the centralized, uh, uh, the, the comp control plane components uh, like, like SMF, AMF, those are uh, Typically, uh, they are dis deployed in, uh, in central data centers, and the user plane functions are actually being more and more distributed. So the CAPS is 
a concept that started uh, <coughs> with, a, with a, a core network, but is also being extended to RAN as well. Uh, we talk about the, uh, for centralized RAN, the Gino BCU, uh, it can actually have the control plane part and the uh, user plane part separated. So um, for edge computing purposes, where it's essential to have um, low latency and have this sitting uh, 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 content close to where the users are. For, for, for those scenarios, the UPFs are being distributed uh, close to the Gino BCUs, um, which means now the distributed UPFs and centralized Gino BCUs, they are, they are actually coming together in the same edge data center and sometimes in the far edge data center. It, they could be even running on the same server. So this is the picture at the top. We've we shown that we have uh, different planes, management, centralization, user plane, and control plane. And at the bottom, we have, on the left side, we have the cell towers uh, connected to the far edge data centers where the Gino BDUs are. And then they are connected to the uh, edge data center that house the Gino BCUs and distributed UPFs. And finally, to the right side, we have the central original data centers where we have the centralized UPF and other centralized 5G core network uh, functions. This picture I stole from this book, Network Architect Architect's Guide to 5G. I want to point that out. Notice that it's actually very, quite familiar to some of us who are familiar with the broadband networks. In this net, uh, picture, we have these lamps connected uh, through a Ethernet uh, network towards the BNGs. In this picture, is MX routers there. Um, and also similar to this picture, where we have access nodes connected through the pseudo wire tunnels to the MX routers there. Um, so the Eno B and Gino B we talked about earlier, they are basically like the disk lamps and or the access nodes in this picture. And the UPFs are like the BNGs, broadband network gateways. So um, coming back to those uh, terms, uh, UPF, its user plane function, is part of the, uh, is the, the core network component of the user plane. Uh, we said earlier that the user plane spans from the UE uh, to, uh, uh, to the core network. Basically, it's between the UE and the UPF. The UPF is like a, a BNG router. It routes or switches traffic between the data network and, uh, and the UEs. And the data net network, uh, between the data net network and that uh, UPF, there is this N6 interface. It's one of those 3GPP terms. Where they, they number all, all kinds of interfaces between different functions. So the traditional UPFs are implemented um, with those PDR FR rules based on the M4 signaling between the UPF and its control plane function. Um, but so the implementation is, the traditional implementation of those uh, UPFs are different from how the routers and switches are implemented. But functionality wise, they just do the same thing. They route or switch traffic based on IP or Ethernet header. And then the RAN component of the 5G user plane um, is the G node B. It uh, determines the area interfaces. It basically relays the IP traffic or, or Ethernet traffic between the UE and the UPF. Um, now, between the G node B and the UPF, the traffic is through a tunnel, GTPU tunnel, or they call it the N3 interface, N3 tunnel in 3GPP terms. Each tunnel is for a PDU session, which is basically a logical connection between a UE and the UPF. 
and that tunnel is identified by four parameters. The address of the GNOB and the TID on the GNOB site, the address of the UPF and the TID on the UPF site. Now, the TID is actually very similar to our MPOS label. If you are familiar with the MPOS uh, VPN, you can think of it that way. Now, we just talked about that uh, N3 tunneling is used between the UPF and GNOB. And that N3 tunneling uses GTPU, which is an IP-based uh, tunnel. I should say IP, UDP-based tunnel. And itself is over an IP transport network that is actually an IP VPN over the very bottom converged transport infrastructure. So this is an example. This is a, a, a picture of the, uh, the stacks involved here. On the left side, we have the UE. Uh, at, the, at the bottom of the stack, we have the 5G AM protocol layers. Um, I, I should explain that uh, AN stands for access network node, uh, access node. Um, so GNOB, um, uh, it can be considered an access node. Uh, access node is a more generic term because uh, in 3GPP, you, 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 while you can have GNOB that terminate the area interface, you can also have other access method that does not involve a wireless at all. So that's why we have this term AM, a generic term, and to cover that. So back to the uh, uh, UE picture, we have the 5G AM protocol layers. You can think of the uh, radio uh, uh, stack. On top of that, top of that is the PDU layer. Uh, so now you look at the Gino B, it terminates that air, uh, 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 the radio stacks, and then it relays the traffic between the, uh, the, uh, the radio stack and the GTPU uh, 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 transport. Now, and then there is a IUPF, it's an inter intermediate UPF uh, that may be used in certain situations, but again, it's just a relay. And finally, we come to the PSA UP UPF. Um, we talked about UPF before. Now, PSA stands for um, PDU session anchor. If you think of the uh, uh, BNG terms, um, the, the, UP, uh, the BMG gives out the IP addresses. And so here is similar. PSA UPF is where we, uh, we manage the IP interfaces for, those, uh, UE, uh, for, the UE, uh, for the UEs on the UPF. And finally, on the right side, we have the data network. Uh, so that, that the interface between the UPF and the data network is N3, uh, N6. And the data network could be the internet or intranet. That's on, does not really matter. So a quick recap uh, for 5G user plane. Traditionally, UPFs are centrally deployed, but for edge computing purposes, they are being distributed close to the GNOB CU. Um, <clears throat> this distribution, distributed UPFs also means that the data network also needs to be distributed. And that distributed data network is in implemented as a VPN. We call this N6 VPN. On the other hand, the RAN is being centralized. Uh, GNODB CUs are moving closer towards the, the, uh, the topologi topological core. Um, this means that the distributed UPF and centralized GNOB are being moving together into this uh, edge data center, sometimes even running on the same server if they are, uh, you, they are, not, you, they are uh, uh, implemented on the servers. Um, again, there is N, this N3 tunnel between the AN or GNOB and the UPF through the IP transport network. That IP trans network is a VPN. We call it N3 VPN. And the PEs 
of the N3 VPN are close to the access nodes uh, or UPFs. This is a picture um, to showing that uh, to show that distributed UPF. Um, if you look at the middle PSA UPF one and and PSA UPF two, those are the distributed UPFs. There, um, they terminate the session between the UE and the UPF, and then use the N6 interface to connect to the data network. Again, data network is being implemented as a VPN, so that's why I show that uh, it's connected to the VRF1 in this picture. And in that VRF1, there could also be a local uh, data network connected where the edge computing resources are hosted there. Now, I mentioned earlier that um, some operators and vendors are promoting some an alternative implementation and deployment of the 5G user plan. Basically, in, implement those distributed UPF as a router or switch um, based on either still based on the M4 signaling defined by 3GPP or they will be based on the they will be based on BGP signaling that is translated from M4. I have a picture to show that later. In the meantime, they want to tra trim off some functionalities, UPF functionalities that are not needed for certain deployment scenarios. For example, uh, traditional UPF have very rich, complicated uh, uh, building functions. Uh, for some scenarios, you may not need it, so they can say, I'll just trim it off. Um, so because of that, this is referred to as a UPF light. More importantly, uh, they want to integrate the N3 VPN and N6 VPN PE functions into it. And once you do that, they refer uh, uh, to this uh, new device or function as a MAP gateway in this uh, so-called SRV6 MAP architecture. Um, so while it's called SRV6 MAP ar ar architecture, that is, is um, that is uh, written as SR specific, SRV6 specific, but it's actually SR agnostic. It, the same concept works. It does not have to do, does not have anything to do with the SR or SRV6. So this is a, a picture of the traditional deployment uh, of centralized UPF. In the upper right corner, we have the central UPF connected to the data network. Uh, SMF is the control plane function that uh, controls that uh, the UPF over that M4 uh, interface. We mentioned that earlier that um, the Gino B CU communicates with the uh, UPF through this N3 tunnel that is over uh, N3 VPN. So here we have uh, uh, this picture showing that uh, um, we have a server running both the Gino B CU software and uh, N3 VPN PE functions inside, inside the same server. So the N3 tunnel from the Gino BCU1 to the central UPF goes through the N3 VRF and through this transport network, terminate on the uh, central UPF, and the central UPF does the, uh, uh, after it re uh, gets the down, uh, uh, uplink traffic from Gino BCU, it removes the GTPU tunnel header and the routes into the data, data network. In the reverse direction, the traffic from the data network reaches the central UPF, it does a, a lookup and figure out, oh, I need to send the tr this traffic to UE1, so it puts, it puts on an N3 or GTPU tunnel header and sends it towards the Gino BCU1 through that N3 VRF. That's traditionally how it works. Now, I removed central UPF from this structure. Instead, now we have a 
this M4 BGP controller that is running the M4 signaling between itself and SMF. Um, that's why what, what I was talking about earlier, that uh, uh, from the M4 signaling, we translate that into BGP signaling that uses a new BGP CFI. And that signaling goes to the um, PEs, the N3 VRF PEs and N6 VRF PE on the right side. What happens now is that uh, we install, uh, even though the, the, from Gino B's point of view, it's still tunneling towards a central UPF. But when that tunnel traffic arrives at that uh, N3 VRF, it gets terminated there. Based on the BGP signaling, we will install forwarding state so that the GTPU tunnel is actually terminated right there in that N3 VRF. And then we direct the, uh, uh, the exposed traffic into the uh, N6 VRF. Inside the N6 VRF, we do a local routing. So some traffic will be sent towards the resources, uh, destinations in the local data network, or it gets uh, uh, sent to a, N6, a remote N6 VRF following the uh, regular VPN routing. That's what the top half of this picture shows. Now, at the lower left, uh, left corner, we have N3 VRF, but we don't have a local VRF. We don't, we don't have an N6 VRF because we don't have a local data network there. So all the traffic can just be sent towards that uh, N6 VRF on the, on the right side without any IP lookup. But here we can do a tunnel stitching. So Gino BCU2 is sending the GTPU tunnel traffic. But that tunnel gets switched to either MPOS or SRV6 tunnel and, and arrives on N6 VRF uh, uh, on, on, on that map PE on the right side. In the meantime, at the lower right corner, we have a wireline PE that has the same, uh, has the N6 VRF for, uh, for the same uh, data net network. So now you can see that traffic from the, from the UE side can either be sent towards uh, the NCVRF that was connected to the uh, original data network that was con connected to the, the central UPF, or it could be also sent to that so wireline PE that is connected to another part of the same data, data network. So an alternative view of this is that the, that central UPF is replaced by a collection of distributed uh, map gateway, map PE, and M4 BGP controller. That collection appears to the SMF and GNOBs as the original central UPF, but under the hood, it's, in t it's changed. Um, and this change is transparent to 3GPP architecture. There's nothing, ch no change in the 3GPP architecture or signaling. It's just an a, a alternative way uh, uh, to do the distributed but traditional UPF. I mentioned earlier that this is actually SR agnostic. Whether you use SR or not, whether you use uh, SR MPOS or SR V6, does not matter. So why do those operators or vendors want to promote that? Um, because this is an alternative to traditional hardware uh, and vendor tied central UPF. And it provides optimal traffic handling, especially when you have local uh, data network connected uh, uh, close to the Gino VCU for edge computing purposes. And even for traffic that needs to go to, this, uh, uh, go to the internet through that uh, uh, hub PE, uh, where the central UPF was before, this uh, um, still has a, a, a better performance with less overhead because previously you need to have the GTPU header um, and then you, you need the N3 VPN header 
this double header going through that backhaul network. Now with this uh, uh, new concept, UPF light or MOP, gate, or MOP gateway, we don't use the GTPU tunneling in the uh, backhaul network anymore. It's just a N6 VPN header there. So this works for all scenarios, but it's especially good for fixed wireless access uh, besides uh, uh, edge computing because uh, fixed wireless access does not require uh, mobility support. Um, uh, if you do need to, uh, mobility support, then we would need to use host routes. But now with fixed, uh, fixed wireless access, we don't need that part. So we can just continue to use prefix routes. Uh, there's some details I, I'm going to skip here. And also F, uh, fixed wireless does not require those rich building functionalities. That's why the UPF light is good enough for these scenarios. Now, with uh, distributed UPF, whether it's traditional distributed UPF or this uh, uh, night UPF or map gateway uh, uh, alternative, you could still have the Gino BCU and uh, UPF co-located with a short connection between them or even running on the same server. But that comes with some cost that we'll talk about later. In 6G, there is one potential enhancement there to basically integrate the access node, which is another a generic term for the GNOB. So we actually integrate access node and UPF together into a new single function, and I call that NAP here. And that NAP could op optionally have the N6 VPN PE function built in. With that, we have a flattened routing switching based architecture. Just remember this, uh, uh, think of it this way now. The NAP is a router or switch with wireless and wired connections. That's it. So the three, um, 3GPP and wireless technologies is responsible to, uh, for is establishing the wire, uh, wireless access, which includes mobility manage management, UE authentic authentication, authorization, all those stuff. Just like how IEEE technologies are for Ethernet connection, and the Wi-Fi technologies are responsible for Wi-Fi connection to a Wi-Fi router. Once that wireless access is established between the UE and this NAP, the rest is just IETF wireline technology. You have a router with wireless and wireline connections. So that is a much simplified uh, architecture there. So this is um, a picture show, uh, showing the stacks involved here. Um, we talk about that 5G AM protocol layers on the UE and uh, and, uh, and and up there before is you can think of it. Uh, those are the protocol stacks for the for the radio access, and uh, the end up one once it pop off that radio stacks and then it it, it exposed the PDU layer, or whatever is uh, uh, above that uh, radio uh, radio stacks. We just do the routing or switching and to the data network that is uh, uh, IPVPN there. So as uh, you can see that NAP1 is, is connecting to the VRF1, and that is for the N6 VPN. And I mentioned earlier that uh, the PE function can actually be, can actually be in, uh, in integrated into the NAP itself as well, optionally. So this, is actually not a real drastic change. If you are familiar with uh, MPoS VPN technology, you may remember this concept of hub and spoke VPN and the concept uh, of perfect MPoS label. Um, so here, the UPF is like a hub PE and the access nodes are the spoke, uh, spoke PEs. And the GTPU tunnels are just, just corresponds to the VPN tunnels. Um, <clears throat> now, 
in the ANs or GNOBs, today there are no VRFs because for uplink traffic, they are always sent towards the UPF. Um, no IP lookup need, is needed. For down, downlink traffic that goes to the uh, UE from the data network, they don't do IP lookup either because every session is, has its own TEID. So um, the traffic from the uh, uh, UPF, uh, if, it, if it is addressed to different, uh, uh, it is for different UE, then we'll, they will have different tunnel. So all the Zenobi does is just uh, stitch those tunnels, the uh, incoming tunnel towards the, uh, to the um, radio resources for a particular uh, uh, UE. Now, that is actually very similar to this uh, concept of perfect label or per interface label. Remember that in the uh, traditional IP VPN, for each VRF, you can advertise a single label for all the prefix, for all the local prefix in your local VRF. Therefore, uh, uh, with that, all other PEs can send you the traffic with that single label, with the same label. And then you need to do the IP lookup in your own local VRF to decide to which CE to send traffic. That's the, what, what we call per VRF label. And then there is uh, another way of, uh, 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 m m uh, way of advertising VPN labels. It's called perfect label or per prefix label or per interface label, whatever it's called. Basically, different prefix or different CEs, they get advertised with different labels. So incoming traffic from other PE to this local PE, based on the incoming label, they know to which CE the traffic will be sent. No IP lookup. Here, back to the uh, old uh, GNOB behavior, it's similar and it's, um, you, uh, you don't have the, you don't do IP lookup for either uplink traffic or downlink traffic because the, uh, you have all the information to decide where to send traffic. But now with this uh, NAP, we are adding this VRF to the, this uh, 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 access node or the, this, this integrated uh, NAP device. Now adding this the VRF is for the edge computing purpose so that traffic coming from the UE can be locally routed once the radio uh, layer is popped up. Uh, uh, so that's the, uh, uh, the gist of it. The advantages include, uh, I mentioned earlier that it's simplified and flattened architecture. And more importantly, um, <clears throat> Because now it's just a router or switch with wireless or wireline connections, a lot of special 5G features, edge computing, like uh, multicast broadcast services or LAN type services, they are just a regular routing and nothing special anymore. And there are still situations where you still have to have separate UPF and AN, and that's fine. You can integrate when desired or feasible and set, you can still separate them when you have to. So why do we want to do this uh, even, even though the co-located uh, UPF and GNOB work fine? Um, one big reason is that now you can do, the si signal is very uh, simplified. Before, to establish that N3 tunnel, you need seven steps involve four components. But with simple, with integrate NAP, you have just two steps is enough. And also that gives you optimize the data plan. You do not, do not need a GTPU or in-cap or decap anymore. That gives you better throughput and performance, especially on the servers, if your UPF and GNOB are used, implemented on the servers. So I have more slides on details of why those special features are no longer special. I'm gonna skip those. So this seems a very natural evolution to 
people familiar and friendly with IETF technologies, but it's a big paradigm shift on the 3GPP and wireless, service, uh, wireless side. But the work, if we want to make it a, a reality, needs to be done in 3GPP. So what I'm trying to do is to socialize the idea among the op mobile operators uh, 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 people who are familiar with IETF wireline technologies to get their feedback and better yet uh, support. If we do get enough support, then we can bring this work to, to 3GPP. So in summary, um, five, with 5G, uh, we have traditional uh, central UPF can be transparently replaced with a collection of those uh, M4 BGP controller, MAP gateway, and MAP PE. Um, that is UPF light. And in 6G, we can potentially integrate those functions to, into a single one so that we can get a simplified flattened architecture, which is basically a router or a switch with the wireless and wireline uh, uh, connections. And for that, I, I want to get uh, operators feedback and better yet their support so that we can dis um, bring this work forward. Thank you. <clears throat> so I want to one mention one more thing. As I mentioned, that uh, getting the feedback and, and, and support is very critical here. So in my slides, I left my contact information. So if you have any feedback, uh, you want to follow up uh, have follow up discussions, please uh, uh, reach me. And I'm also here uh, all the way through our, our social event tonight. So I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to some of you who are interested in this. Thank you. <clears throat>